Hello class. Welcome to SW101. I am Professor Barkage, and in today's lecture, we are going to be talking about the history of street workout, aka... <laughs> I can't do it. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the video. You guys got the Barkage of the Hidden Gains Village here today, and in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the history of street workout, aka calisthenics. We're basically going to look at uh, where it all started and how calisthenics uh, got to where it is <clears throat> now. Uh, so you might learn something new. You might not. Anyway, I was joking. Actually, I don't know if, I don't even know if I made it that far <laughs> in the intro, but I was basically going to say there was going to be a test on this and I was going to come in in my normal voice and be like, no, there's no test, but you might want to take notes. You'll learn something new and, uh, hope, hopefully you guys will enjoy the video. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started talking about, uh, the origin of the word calisthenics. Now, personally, I already knew what this meant, but some of you guys watching might not know. Um, the word calisthenics uh, originates from two different uh, stems. Uh, both are Greek. Uh, the Greek word kalos and stenos, uh, which uh, means beautiful strength. And I think that really sums up the sport very well, because if you look at a lot of the sport, um, a lot of the skills <clears throat> in calisthenics, uh, they are all very beautiful, especially when you compare them to uh, other feats of strength, such as uh, strongmen or uh, weightlifting or powerlifting. Like, for example, you look at someone who was able to execute a perfectly clean and smooth Maltese press versus uh, a powerlifter who is, you know, grunting and struggling to bench 500 pounds. A very impressive feat of strength, yes, but beautiful? Eh, not really. Honestly, calisthenics destroys other, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, other strength sports in terms of beauty. Um, anyway, uh, also, I did want to touch on the physique a little bit. Now, I do believe the meaning beautiful strength does refer to the skills, but also, you know, you do calisthenics, you will get a aesthetic physique, which can actually be considered beautiful. And with calisthenics, you do tend to end up with the more, the leaner Hollywood looking physique versus like powerlifting or strongman where you're just like a big hunk of muscle, essentially. Um, okay, so... Anyway, speaking of the Greek origins of the word, calisthenics actually dates all the way back to like 400 to 600 BC when the Greek Spartans would train calisthenics, which is really, really cool. They would mainly, uh, they would mainly just focus on basic exercises just to build up strength because th their goals weren't to perform skills and stuff. They obviously wanted to be as strong as possible for battle. So they mainly just focus on basic exercises, but calisthenics, yes, it is that old. <clears throat> and uh, recent, more recently, well, not super recently, but more recently than 400 BC, uh, calisthenics was actually incorporated in physical education courses back in the 1800s. And once again, uh, this was just something you would do. You'd go to school and then you'd go to your physical education class or gym class, wherever you call it, and you would basically do uh, also basic exercises like push-ups, sit-ups, uh, pull-ups, stuff like that, just so the kids at school uh, could do some sort of physical activity and just stay in shape. Uh, so this, the, in terms of the basic exercises, those have really been around as long as, as, as long as we know, uh, basic exercises have been around. Um, now skills on the other hand, and I'm talking about planche, Maltese, uh, front lever, et cetera, et cetera, those were actually ab adopted from gymnastics, okay? So if you actually want a video on the history of gymnastics so we can look into more of an, the origin of the skills, smash 100 likes on this video and I will be so down to uh, make that as well, okay? <clears throat> so the skills that we see in street workout, save for, I believe it was the human flag, uh, most of them originate from gymnastics, but the human flag is one that was uh, created with calisthenics. So that's pretty cool. That's actually a reason to like the human flag. A lot of you guys around the channel know I'm not a fan of that skill, but uh, the fact that it is uh, the baby of street workout, 
that that's pretty freaking cool. All right. Um, and so also, uh, calisthenics was used in, in the military uh, in order to, for the soldiers to build up strength. Again, though, focusing on basic exercises, of course. Um, you could also see calisthenics in pop culture references. Uh, a famous scene uh, from the movie Rocky IV uh, was Rocky doing dragonflies, which is a core exercise that is, even to this day, still used for people to help to help them achieve the front lever. Uh, also in anime, uh, well before uh, YouTube was around, uh, Goku was actually doing... Uh, handstand push-ups in the gravity chamber. Uh, not, not in the gravity chamber, in the uh, ship when he was going to Namek. He had the gravity turned up, and he was doing like handstand push-ups and all his calisthenics workouts. So that was really, really cool. Also, Rock Lee uh, from Naruto. Rock Lee and Guy Sensei were always doing like handstand push-ups and crazy uh, like one-arm push-ups, crazy like calisthenics stuff. So <clears throat> it's been around in pop culture for a while, and also... Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm sure all of you guys know who he is. He would incorporate calisthenics into his bodybuilding routine, um, <clears throat> which is pretty exciting. Okay, so this was all, uh, like I said, we, we had 400 BC with the Greek uh, Spartans. We had the 1800s with the physical education system. And I'd say like 19... 1900 to like 2000, that was uh, sort of like the military, still in schools. Um, and then we started seeing the late uh, 90s, some of the more pop culture references and stuff like that. And then Arnold as well, okay? Um, but what you guys are all wondering about is kind of how our community came to be online, okay? So <clears throat> Hannibal for King. In, in 2008, Hannibal for King posted a video on YouTube of his calisthenic skills. And that video went absolutely freaking viral. And Hannibal for King was doing really, really crazy stuff for the time. He was doing muscle-ups. He was doing uh, explosively clean pull-ups all the way to his waist. He was doing his uh, planche push-ups. We won't mention the form. He was doing planche push-ups. He was actually even doing like a little bit of front lever as well. Like Hannibal for King was really doing a lot of cool stuff that no one had really seen at the time. And because of that, Hannibal for King is honestly like the God. He really is like the God of street workout. He really brought this uh, he really got this a lot of attention on the internet. And Hannibal for King uh, would go on to inspire other OGs, <clears throat> such as uh, the bar stars, Frank Medrano. Um, so to backpedal a little bit, 2008, Hannibal for King, he posts his video, goes super viral, then he essentially would inspire Frank Medrano and the Bar Stars and other people that are like considered OG in the community. And this was in 2011, which makes perfect sense because you know, like Frank Medrano, he discovers Hannibal for King in 2008, 2009 or whatever. And then by the time in 2011, he's already been training for a few years and now he's ready to show his stuff in his own videos. And Frank Medrano, uh, similar, similarly to Hannibal for King, would uh, go on in, in 2011. He'd post videos on YouTube and they would blow up. Frank Medrano was getting 40, like 30 to 40 million views on his YouTube videos when he would post his uh, skill edits of him doing stuff like typewriter pull ups, uh, handstand push ups. Uh, he was doing some pretty heavy weighted dips. He did dragonflies. He did front lever. One or like a bunch of crazy stuff at for at the time. Frank Madrano was doing it and getting a lot of views <clears throat> on YouTube for it. Uh, the Bar Stars, I believe, they formed their channel in 2011 as well. And Bar Stars was, if you don't know what Bar Stars is, Bar Stars was essentially a group of people. Uh, it was founded by Ed Checo, um, and basically. He would post videos, uh, tutorials, kind of, kind of videos similar to what I do. Uh, he would post tutorials for skills uh, and different workout routines that you can follow. So the bar stars were very, very good uh, for getting people into the community because they were providing uh, resources for people that probably Hannibal for King didn't have when he was starting, you know? <clears throat> 
So that was really good is we're starting to see each generation is now starting to pass on their knowledge. So you could say, uh, you know, whoever inspired Hannibal for King, I believe he said it was his brother. Uh, but so you have Hannibal for King, who's kind of the OG. He's going to go on to inspire bar stars uh, and Frank Madrano, and they're going to sort of build up their communities, uh, have their programs, workout videos, and all that stuff. And then they're going to go on to inspire people down the road, and it's going to be sort of a chain reaction there. So <clears throat> you have the bar stars, uh, Frank Madrano. You also have bar brothers, a uh, similar group to bar stars, essentially. They sort of, uh, they sort of were trying to form a sense of community. Uh, there were a set of requirements that you could complete. Uh, you would post your YouTube video and then you were essentially a part of Bar Brothers and you could uh, practice their teaching as well. And uh, again, really great for getting people integrated in the community. So shout out to Bar Brothers and Bar Stars <clears throat> for really helping getting people inspired in from 2011 to 2015. Um, <clears throat> and also going back to 2011, that is also when the, um, I always screw up their name, W... I'm going to put it in the screen, like WSCWCF or whatever it's called. Uh, the, the organization that runs the World Cup, uh, they were founded in Latvia in 2011. And they, uh, th what was great about that is now we had competitions. And the earliest competition I could find was in 2011. Um, but competitions are essentially something that's really good to for getting people inspired to start training. Um, it got, it really took, competitions really took off in 2015 when the king of the bar competition, uh, hosted by Bartsy Workout, uh, who was another sort of OG <clears throat> calisthenics YouTuber, absolutely blew up. It got probably like 50 million views or something like that. <clears throat> and when you see uh, people competing and stuff, it really inspires you to uh, get started so you can eventually reach to the level where you are competing in com competitions as well. <clears throat> um, in fun fact, I believe the first Burning Gate competition was also around uh, 2015, 2016, around that range. So uh, 2011, uh, the WCS, WCF, <laughs> people are going to get mad at me for that in the comments, but they start in 2011 and then they have their World Cup since then. And then around 2013, 2014, we start seeing other organizations hosting competitions as well, which is really good for getting people involved in the sport. <clears throat> um, and there was actually one other name that I wanted to mention. Uh, and this is in terms of how kind of the hardcore, the more hardcore and advanced statics took off. Uh, credit for that. It essentially goes to Dmitry Kuznetsov, who's a Russian guy. <clears throat> um, I believe he started training around 2010, 2011, and by 2014, he had a pretty good level. He was doing, he was doing, in like 2014, he was doing like actual clean static skills. He was doing Maltese on floor, full planche. And what's notable about him is that uh, Viktor Kamenov and Vitaly Melnik and some other notable athletes that are really, really strong in statics said that they took inspiration from him. And so when you are someone who's inspiring those guys, you absolutely deserve the recognition for it. So shout out to Dmitry Kuznetsov. I think he really, he's the static game pioneer. So you look at Hannibal for King, he's sort of just like our... He's like the god of calisthenics, essentially, like like the founder of calisthenics on the internet. But in the more <clears throat> uh, specific areas, you have Kuznetsov, who uh, sort of took the static game to the next level and inspired people uh, down the road that way, okay? <clears throat> so that's like the 2011 to 2015 area, er, era, sorry. And then in 2016... <clears throat> is when Chris Heria started Thenx. And so if you don't know about Chris Heria, uh, Chris Heria was essentially a part of Bar Stars before he found founded Thenx. <clears throat> Chris Harry has been around for a long time. Um, but he, in, in 2016, he founded Thenx. 
and that would just blow the sport up. Uh, FedEx provided good resources for a lot of athletes who wanted to get into the sport, <clears throat> uh, what, what they needed to, to be strong. He had workouts, he had videos, he had an app you can follow. Uh, it was all very convenient. And uh, also the thing with uh, FedEx, which I liked, is that FedEx was always focused more so on the strength aspect. You know, they had uh, Asvaldo Lugones, who was a super high level static athlete uh, working for them. And, you know, Osvaldo is, of course, an inspiration to many people today. <clears throat> so, and, and FedEx is obviously still huge now. So FedEx, absolutely insane for the community. I would honestly consider, I think I've said this before, I would honestly consider FedEx to be super mainstream. Uh, Chris Heria has 5 million subscribers on his 10X YouTube channel and like 3 million on his personal channel. Everybody knows Thanex. So honestly, I'd say because of Chris Heria, calisthenics is now mainstream. So <clears throat> shout out to him for that. Um, <clears throat> so that's 2016 kind of to now, I guess, Thanex is formed. Um, I did want to talk about 2017 because 2017, uh, what happened was there was a competition called Street Workout Ultimate Battles. You guys you guys all know what it is. <clears throat> and basically, uh, Andrea La Rosa and Victor Kamenov had a battle there. And at the time, you know, well, I actually wasn't super, I was training at this time, but I wasn't really into the static community at all. I wasn't really even training in statics. I was just doing weighted stuff. But <clears throat> you have La Rosa and Kamenov in this battle here. And both of these guys are like considered to be the strongest. And they battle. <laughs> so it was absolutely insane. <clears throat> and I reacted to this battle on my channel. And from the comments on that video and other comments I've seen, this battle really went on to inspire a lot of athletes to start training. Because at the time during the Street Worker Ultimate Battle, like you, you'd watch that video now and You'd say, well, yeah, ton, tons of people can do these skills now. But at that time in 2017, like no one was really doing what they were doing. So it was really cool to see these two beasts just on a whole nother level, which just inspired a bunch of people to really <clears throat> start striving for that. Um, so that kind of leads us to where we are now. Like from then on, it's just a grind of – newer athletes being inspired and taking it to the next level because of the knowledge that they have from those that came before. And we get to 2020 and we have the pandemic. So obviously you can't go to gyms anymore to work out. So you pretty, so one of the, one of the great options and more convenient options is to train body weight workouts at your house. Uh, so I believe that in 2020, we kind of saw a new wave of people getting into calisthenics and I truly believe that uh this sport will continue to grow and that uh it's it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be <clears throat> super big and calisthenics is just going to take over anyway guys that is pretty much all I have for this little uh history lesson here today I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope you found it informative and learned something um if you did uh please uh leave a like um <clears throat> Please leave a like on the video as well as hit me with a nice subscribe no jutsu. Also, comment below uh, what you thought of this video and future video ideas that you'd like to see. Uh, with that, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.